Welcome back, Defenders. Jake here. Let's start with the craziest story first. Russia lays claim to Alaska and huge swaths of Asia as Putin issues a new decree. The new edict affects all of Moscow's historic holdings across three continents, including former imperial colonies here in the United States. This is the document that Putin signed on January 18th saying that any territory that once belonged to Imperial Russia belongs to Russia today. Russia is never allowed to lose territory. Doesn't matter if it's through war, revolution, or the sale of land. All of it was illegitimate, and anything that once belonged to the old Russian Empire belongs to Putin and the Russians today. This would include Alaska, which the Russians sold to the United States in 1867. Why? Why did Russia sell Alaska to the United States in 1867? And it's because the Russians had just lost the Crimean War to Britain, France, and Turkey. So the Russians were concerned that the British were going to take Alaska anyways. Imperial Russia and the United States had never gone to war with each other, the Russians wanted to curry favor with the Americans as a potential future ally against Great Britain. So they sold Alaska to the United States as a buffer. The British Empire included Canada at this time. The British probably were going to take Alaska anyways if they went to war with Russia again. So Russia was being proactive and deliberately sold Alaska to the United States as a counterbalance against the British Empire. And this reached the State Department. Someone asked this representative if the United States government has a response to Putin laying claim to Alaska. Again, move to Russia, if I may. Putin apparently today um, signed an order declaring a 1983 sale of Alaska to the United States as illegitimate, quote unquote. Do you have a response to that? Let me just understand that he signed something today that said the sale of uh, Alaska is uh, illegitimate. Right. Well, I, I think I can I speak for all of us in the in the in the U.S. government to say that uh, certainly he is not getting it back. Um, so, uh, uh, so, so the State Department is saying that Russia is not getting Alaska back. But well, hold on here, isn't Russia a nuclear power? Aren't we trying to prevent World War III? If Russia says that we need to respect historical borders and this territory used to belong to Russia, there's a lot of people in my own government saying that we should give up territory for peace. So for anyone telling Ukraine to give up land, give up territory for peace, would they say the same thing about Alaska? What's the difference? Russian propaganda can say that the ethnic Russians of Alaska who settled there in the 1860s are being oppressed by that evil Biden Nazi government, their secret bio labs in Alaska, America is planning to invade Russia from Alaska and we need a neutral buffer area. I'm being facetious, but this just highlights the absurdity. And we're getting some of it from Ukraine as well. Zelensky publishes decree on historically Ukrainian regions to Russia's fury. Zelensky's office published a decree saying Russia has historically denigrated the rights of Ukrainians living in southern and western Russia and continues to do so. So here is a map. This is pretty important. This red line is modern day Ukraine. And the green is according to a imperial Russian census conducted in 1897. According to the Russians, in 1897, this green territory is the Ukrainian-speaking region of the Russian Empire. You'll notice it includes Crimea, it includes uh, Krasnodar and, and the Rostov region. So Zelensky issued this decree that these territories of modern-day Russia are historically Ukrainian-speaking territories. And the ethnic Ukrainians of these territories in Russia 
are being oppressed. Their ethnic identity, their language, their culture. This is true, but 1992 was the number, guys. What the lines were, in 1992, those are the countries. We're not going back in time to 1867. But some people don't believe that. Slovak Prime Minister claims Ukraine is not a sovereign country. Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico on Saturday alleged Ukraine was not a sovereign nation, but under the absolute control of the United States, embracing conspiracy theories. Incredible how the United States has stopped militarily supporting Ukraine, yet people are promoting these conspiracies that were some Nazi governments controlling Ukraine to try and destroy Russia. So this Slovak prime minister is joining the ranks of hung Hungary's uh, Viktor Orban, saying that Ukraine has to give up territory to Russia to end this war. And of course, this is never going to work. Here's a clip I want to share with you of the Polish foreign minister explaining why giving up territory to dictators never works. Um, <clears throat> there is never a shortage of pocket chamberlains <laughs> willing to um, sacrifice other people's land or freedom for their own uh, peace of mind. And we shouldn't do it. Uh, I will use a risque uh, comparison, but you know, if a woman is being raped, is not the best time to tell her, don't escalate or negotiate. Uh, you have to come to her assistance. Uh, and so um, what happens in the occupied territory, what happens to the Ukrainian citizens who are being um, uh, forcibly racified, who are being tortured, who are be whose children are getting stolen, these are sacrifices that Ukraine is making, not us. And therefore, it is only up to Ukraine to make those judgments. It's only up to Ukraine to make these decisions. So these guys are just trolls. They had a meeting and they got together and look at their faces. Uh, they just, some people say they look like trolls. I personally think they look like Ferengi from Star Trek, but how cowardly of these men to claim that Ukraine needs to give up their people. It's not just territory. It's giving up millions of people for peace. If these two idiots want to drop out of NATO and then surrender their territory to Russia, they're welcome to do so. And here is uh, a statement from the foreign minister of Latvia explaining that this war can only end in one way. Three words, peace through strength. I think we have to open up our eyes and realize that Russia will not stop uh, its war in Ukraine. The only way that Russia will stop is if it is actively stopped. And the Ukrainians are willing to put up the fight. The Ukrainians need our Western undivided support, European Union support. So we have to come finally to the decision to make sure that we have the funding for Ukraine for the coming years so that they can continue to sustain their government. And we also have to make sure that we provide the weapons and the ammunition that they need in order to do this task. For anyone who thinks that it's expensive uh, to support Ukraine, that this money is better spent elsewhere, I can only say it will only get more expensive in the future. If we do not help Ukraine stop Russia now, it will be only all the more expensive for us later because Russia will not stop. It can only be stopped. It is within our power. It is certainly in our interests uh, to do this job and to do it right in the European Union. Peace through strength. If we allow Russia to continue expanding, continue these wars, it's only going to get more difficult. It's only going to get more expensive. We have to listen to what the Russians are actually saying and doing. And Putin is looking at this map, the height of Soviet power after World War II. These are the borders of the Soviet Union, and these are all the countries that more or less they indirectly controlled. Putin stares at this map all day and says, that would be nice. I'll take that, please. 
Or if you prefer this map, the height of the Russian Empire prior to World War I, Putin will settle for this map as well. But now that we've engaged this war, now that Putin has gone into Ukraine, the name of the game is take a territory, russify the people, mobilize the men, and send those men to die in the next country. Keep going until every territory that once belonged to the old czars of Russia belongs to Putin today. These wars will only get more costly both in lives and dollars if we don't help Ukraine today. But Russia's still Russia. They're pretty incompetent. Russia blames Kyiv for attack on the Baltic gas terminal. And things are worse than initially uh, thought. The fire at this gas terminal burned for 40 hours, almost two full days, before firefighters could put it out. And the problem with this fire is it's the winter time in Russia, so firefighters were using water to put out the gas fire, and as the water freezes, you get frost wedging. Ice on delicate and sensitive equipment when it expands destroys absolutely everything. So in the effort to put out the fire, they damage the facility even more. And it's looking bad. According to the analysts at the Moscow BCS brokerage, they're estimating it's going to take weeks, if not months, to get this facility back online. Every day this facility is down. This is costing the Russians millions of dollars in export revenue. And if they can't fix it until Russia thaws out, then this is going to cost them billions of dollars. These are the ships in real time chilling in Luga Bay. They're not going to be able to fill up their tankers because this facility is partially offline. There might be some terminals still capable of pumping. But the Russians have a serious problem if Ukraine capitalizes on this strategy and goes after more of their depots and terminals. And Ukraine's feeling pretty confident. Ukraine's new drone strategy helped by an open goal in Russian air defenses. Kremlin spokesperson accuses Kyiv of inhumane attacks where damage was slight, while the Ukrainian Air Force spokesperson said, Russian air defenses are like Swiss cheese and promised more raids. Because the Russians have been diverting all of their air defense resources to the war zone, places like St. Petersburg are looking a bit thin. If there are any valid military targets to go after, Ukraine's going to figure out how to get a drone to slam into one of these uh, terminals. Seven killed, over 70 injured in the latest strikes across Ukraine. Kyiv missile attack, multiple explosions in the capital city as Russia launches a massive strike. The Russians just blow up apartment buildings. It's been two years. If Russia could use their missiles and drones on valid military targets to win this war, they probably would do it. But Russia doesn't know how to win this war. It's been two years. So the Russians, to, make, to keep up appearances and boost the morale of their people, they just keep blowing up apartment buildings somewhere in Ukraine. Here's a clip I want to share of uh, Ruslan Stefanchuk. He's the chairperson of the Ukrainian parliament. And he's in Ukraine at the site of an apartment building that was struck with a Russian missile, begging for, begging for help from the world. Dear speakers, dear presidents of parliament, dear members of parliament, I'm now here in the Kharkov. It's one of the biggest cities in Ukraine. And you see behind me is a result of Russian morning attack to the peaceful people. I want that every one of you see these pictures and understand that Russia is a terrorist country and nothing can change there but just your support, your financial aids. And sure, please, we need your air defense system. We need your rockets, anti-rocket system. We need your artillery and ammunition. Please make your decision and be so fast because Ukrainian fighting for your freedom. Be with Ukraine. 
the West has the power to stop this. The West, the United States, has the resources to give Ukraine everything they need to win this war. It's not a question of capability, it's just a question of will. And through whatever means, Russia has infiltrated agents in the West, and they're blocking this necessary aid, the aid that Ukraine needs to defeat the Russians. And every day wasted, debating in Congress, debating in the EU Parliament, Ukrainian civilians continue to die. The pictures and videos I've seen online from the last day are horrifying, as Russia just indiscriminately targets and kills civilians. I'll link this video down below if you want to see the bodies of a mother and daughter pulled from the rubble of a building. This was Russia's goal. This is what Russia wants at this point. To just kill as many Ukrainians as possible. Depopulate the territory until their incompetent military can actually manage to take something significant. When we switch over to the military map, uh, the city of Avdivka, no real changes. But we've got a video from Krinky. The Ukrainians still have several footholds on the other side of the river. And the hot spot that everyone's been talking about the last couple weeks is right here, Krinky. And we've got another video of Russian soldiers complaining. Let me share with you what they're saying today. We've been here since August 2nd of 2023. Today is January 20th of 2024. In these seven months, we haven't had one day off, one day of rotation. Since August 2nd, we've been under constant shelling from all calibers, including clusters and phosphorus bombs. In the sky, there are heaps of drones, reconnaissance, loitering, and kamikaze. On the 14th of October, when the Ukrainians broke through to our shoreline, shelling and drone strikes multiplied. Many of our brothers in arms left Krinky as wounded, and those unlucky as dead. Many wounded died due to long evacuation times. We're not abandoning our positions, but morale, exhaustion grows daily. However, our commander is not carrying out rotation, not letting us get our deserved leave time, not providing us with winter uniforms. Many of us spend our own money. Food and gas brought in are brought in tiny quantities. Due to this, we have to walk to a shop seven kilometers from our location. The road to the shop is fired on by the Ukrainians. Some of us die on our way back from the shop. We're not provided with bottled water. In the winter, we have a simple issue with bathing. Many questions about payments. No one was paid combat money for December. Daily pay for active combat is not paid either. Many of us are paid our regular salary while being in Krinky. We're asking Shoyu to look into the ongoing lack of order and injustice in our section of the front line. So gas terminals in St. Petersburg are blowing up. I don't think Shoigu is going to prioritize these grunts in Krinky getting their leave time. These men have to piece it together. They have to figure it out that their only way to live, their only way to survive, is if they find a way to surrender to the Ukrainians. But this is it. This, in a nutshell, is the world's second most powerful military. They're not getting food and water on the front lines. They're having to buy their own food with their own money. And this is how they get their drinking water. In the wintertime, if you can find some clean snow, maybe that's not a bad option, but to take it from a stagnant pool in the ground where bombs and missiles have been firing and dropping. This is how you get dysentery. This is how you die a very painful death uh, from dehydration eventually as you can't keep any fluids down at all. Let's check in with the weather map and it's slightly warmer in Moscow. Negative four degrees Celsius. It's about 20-ish degrees Fahrenheit. And across Russia, this is baffling. This is happening in Sevastopol. There have been rolling blackouts on the Crimean Peninsula as Russia can't figure out how to keep the lights on all the time. And civilians are having to queue for fresh water in freezing temperatures. 
Here's a clip of a woman I want to share. Normally I read these for you, but I want you to hear her voice, hear what she has to say. This woman uh, lives in Podolsk. This is in the Moscow region. And she looks pretty fed up about her apartment building not having heat. The clip continues with other women complaining about not having heat. I'll link it down below, but when are these women going to piece it together? That the reason why this utility disaster is occurring is because their government is fighting an unnecessary war trying to steal Ukrainian land. Can these women connect the dots that they're suffering because they attacked another country? Here's an Instagram story. I want to share this. Uh, I'll read this one. This is a woman in the Moscow area who once again doesn't have uh, utilities. And here's what she said on Instagram. Such a moment. Can you imagine in the 21st century outside, the age of technology and innovation? Yesterday they turned off the electricity, heat, and water because of an accident on some HEP or CHP, I don't know what it's called. I never looked into it. But the very fact, can you imagine the whole city was without electricity and water for 24 hours? Thank God we have containers with water saved. It's just some kind of trash. This is the 21st century, and such things happen quite often. They turn the electricity or something else off. In the Moscow region, I haven't encountered something like this for a long time. It's a horror. Leave Ukraine. Spend your money on fixing your t utilities, and you don't have to be freezing in the wintertime. And as far as drinking snow, Siberian city blanketed in gray snow, prompting factory inspections. Even in the wintertime, if you want clean drinking water, you can't even eat or drink the snow in Russia. Their entire society is so disgusting. Let's get to the good news for Ukraine. EU foreign ministers agree on plan to transfer profits from Russian frozen Russian assets to Ukraine. I think there's going to be a lot of action at this February 1st EU summit. We're going to make progress on several fronts, I believe. And this needs to happen. We need to take this Russian money frozen in Western banks and start giving it to Ukraine to just buy whatever military equipment they need uh, from inventories around the world. Belgium will provide Ukraine with 611 million euros in military aid for 2024. Thank you so much, Belgium. Final clip I have for you is the Prime Minister of Poland. He made an appearance in Kyiv and went to the Wall of Heroes to pay his respects to fallen Ukrainian soldiers.
that's all for this update video. Glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. If you found this video informative, give me a thumbs up. Best way to support the channel. Comments and questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, keep defending the truth, keep defending democracy.